Hello my dear friends, students and viewers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Anjula Murmu, working as an assistant professor in the Department of English at SP Mahila College, which is one of the constituent colleges under Sedo Kanu Murmu University, Dumka, Jharkhand, India. Friends, today I am going to deal with one of the renowned sonnets of Edmund Spencer. One day I wrote her name. The sonnet is prescribed for the students of UG Semester 2, English. Now, before entering into other aspects, let us first read out the poem and enjoy its beauty. As we know, Spencer is a master technician in sonnet writing. One day I wrote her name upon the strand. One day I wrote her name upon the strand. But came the waves and washed it away. Again I wrote it with a second hand. But came the tide and made my pains a spray. Vain man, said she, that tossed in vain essay. A mortal thing so to mortalize, for I myself shall like to this decay. And ache my name be wiped out likewise. Not so. Quit I, let baser things devise, to die in dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse your virtues, rare shall it anise, and in the heavens write your glorious name, where when as death shall all the world subdue, a love shall live and later life renew. Now, friends, let us learn when and where was Spencer born. Edmund Spencer was born in East Smithfield, London around the year 1552 or 1553. His exact date of birth is not recorded. His parents were Elizabeth and John Spencer. He pursued his Bachelor of Arts in the year 1573 and Master of Arts in 1576. He died at very young age, at 46. The date of his death was 13 January 1599 in London, England, United Kingdom. Now let us learn what uh, were his contributions to the English literature. Spencer during his period wrote well celebrated works. His The Shepherder's Calendar was published in the year 1579 and in the same year The Highness in Honor of Love and Beauty was published. The Fairy Queen first three books were published in 1590 and the next four books were published in 1596. Astrophil was published in the year 1595. Amority and Epithalamian was published in the year 1595. Prothalamian in the year 1596. Now students, let us learn what is sonnet. It's very simple and easy to understand sonnet. The term sonnet has come from the Italian sonetto. Suno which means a sound or a song. The sonnet in general sense means a short poem. It consists of 14 lines. There are three types of sonnets. And number one is Italian or Petrarchan sonnet. Italian or Petrarchan sonnet is a short poem of 14 lines divided into parts. The first eight lines form the octave, with the rhyme scheme A B B A. The last six lines are called the sustate and they rhyme variously as C D E C D E or C D C D E E or C D E D E C and so on. The second one is Shakespearean sonnet. Shakespearean sonnet is a poem of 14 lines and 
they are divided into three quatrains with a concluding couplet. The quatrains say the subject and the couplet sums it up. The rhyme scheme of three quatrains is as A B A B C D C D E F E F followed by a single couplet G G. Now the third one, which is the current poem or the sonnet, one day I wrote her name, is Spenserian sonnet. Spenserian sonnet links each quatrain to the next by continuing rhyme A B A B B C B C C D C D by a concluding single couplet E E. Now friends, let's know amority. What is amority? Amority is Spencer's sonnet series and this was published in the year 1595. This sonnet sequence, according to critics, is the story of Spencer's courtship with Elizabeth Boyle, whom he married on June 11, 1595. It includes 89 sonnets and a series of short poems. Spencer's sonnet number 75 is the present poem, One Day I Wrote Her Name. This is the part of Amorty. In this poem, poet attempts to preserve his lady love's name on the strand. One day, poet writes the name of his lady love on the sand of the sea beach, but, no, but in no time, rolling waves washes it away. He writes it again, but his effort goes in vain, for the waves sweep it away again. Poet's beloved considers this effort useless for writing her name on the sand. And she frankly tells him that she should be subjected to decay and that her name should her name would be wiped out in the same way. The poet then replies to his lady love that he will immortalize her by writing her name in his verse and their love will remain eternal forever and ever. Now, my dear students, let's look into the theme. The central theme of the sonnet, of course, is love. This is the usual theme of the conventional Elizabethan sonnets, which are patterned after Petrarch. The present sonnet expresses the poet's desire to preserve his love. He tries to write his lady love's name on the strand but finds it, finds it washed away by the rolling waves of the sea. He does not, however, yield to despair, although the lady makes fun of him for his vain essay. His conviction of the power of love is sound enough. His love is no base thing to be lost in dust. It is potent enough to enliven her with fame. This conviction is strengthened by the poet's firm faith and the power of his verse to preserve his love and eternize her virtue. Uh, so thank you friends for watching it. Uh, see you very soon in my next video. Till then, bye-bye. Stay safe. Stay happy. Thank you.